Welcome to the map feeding deal in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 in a matchup that will remind you to the Lord of the Rings trilogy between Isengard and Rohan. Peasants against Uruks. Theodin against Saruman. Aragorn versus Lurz. Warchan is going to be used to kill those peasants. And Uruks, there is no escape from them. They will run you down. In the meantime, Mary has been recruited to capture the settlement in the front. Double farm opening for Rohan. He will not recruit. He will recruit actually more peasants from the farms. That's good. The peasants won't be able to destroy this lumber mill. That's certain. And with a Uruk pit for his opening, the Isengard player will also be capturing this one with his Lambir Milvorka. And that should be kind of good. Okay, in a 2v2 situation, again, again, peasants don't stand a chance. Rohan is trying to creep this, but I think at this point of the game, he's just leashing for his opponent. The Isengard player should be easily able to contest this creeping and eventually even end up stealing the money in the creep. More peasants are coming, they have no draft yet. But it's gonna be a 3v2 situation. The Hobbit will eventually not make it. They are bringing the Hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> okay, it's a very good situation actually for Isengard. He will be able to clean those peasants, no problemo. He will also get this creep for free and the settlement for free. He is able to keep those two Lambermits under his control as well. So you can't have a better start than that one when you play Isen. We will get more and more peasants from the farms inside and outside. We have three farms inside the base of Rohan and two farms outside for a wood bonus, a food bonus in total of 20%, which will make your Rohirrim way cheaper. The creep will be taken by Aizen. It's a level 2 Uruk now, getting the money as well. That's pretty good. And the farm is going to be destroyed. After this amazing start into the game, the Aizenga player has almost one power point collected. It means he's only one power point away from getting to unlock is industry from the spellbook good looking base 2 uruk pit level 2 before a uh, rohan player was able to go for the stable aizen will be able to recruit the pikeman because he went for the crossbow man crossbow men are counting as two uruks because they cost double the money which help you to get the uruk pit to level 2 way way faster war chant has been used on this uruks on four of them Two of them will be creeping this goblin, two of them will be creeping this war player. No problem, Uruks can do this. In the meantime, Rohan player was able to creep this goblin layer with the help of the Hobbit. He is now a level 2 peasant. But remember, the Uruk is now level 2. It means Aizen is able to recruit the Berserker, which are one of the best and cheapest counters to the Swordman. In this case, the peasants. And again, two power points almost in the bank. Very good, very good, very good. Stable up on the field for Rohan now. He will recruit some Rohirrim. He has a good looking castle though. The Lumber Mill has been destroyed for the first time into the game. And also this Lumber Mill has been destroyed. So Rohan player was actually going for like a crazy amount of peasant spam. And I like to see this. Peasants are super underrated. Yes, they are not the greatest swordsman of the game. But keep that in mind, they are very cheap. And you can recruit them from 20 settlements simultaneously. Kill them. Ooh, bad trample. Bad trample. Okay, the Berserker was able to get in safety. Warchant is reloading. And he has the power points for the industry, but he's not choosing it yet. Again, very good looking base for Aizen. He's going for the Warp Pit now as the next structure. And the Pikemen, they need to just avoid these peasants. That's very important. As long as you can avoid the peasants, you should be in a good spot. Berserker should be able to deal with this. Even though a level 2 peasant is pretty strong, but it's a 2v1 situation. Look at the DPS they have against the peasants. Not even close, baby. You know? In the meantime, he was also creeping this at the bottom side with these three Uruks. Two of them, four Uruks, two of them are being level two. And we have a pikeman chasing down the... Ooh! Actually, not a bad idea to watch on them there. Hopefully, uh, he was hoping that they will charge into them. But I think the player was already giving him the command to get back to the base. The base has no well in it, though. That's a problem. <laughs> you need to wait. If a Elma up on the field, Elma is trampling, getting some money from the outlaw leadership, but trampling into the pipe when it's something you don't want to do, Elma. The creep will be taken by the peasants. Also, one part of the treasure will be taken. Elma will hit level 3 after spearing this Berserker, getting one big step closer for the horse lord leadership for 60, no, 70% more DPS. These two level 2 Uruks will make it back to the castle. 
maybe watch uh, maybe Lourdes to counter this Irma. But because Irma, if you don't stop him, he will actually hit level 4 now. After creeping these two layers, the Goblin layer here and the Ward layer at the top. That comes the Ward Rider. The whole ability has been used. Beautiful trample into the peasants, but they are level 3. And again, level advantage means so much in this game. One more trample. But look at the minimap in the meantime. Because of the lack of horses, Aizen is basically taking over the game. Basically taking over the game. Oh, we have a Legolas. Okay. That's pretty interesting. I like it. I like it. I really do like it. The creep will be still taken, by the way, by the peasants. Yoma will use the spear throw over and over again to get the experience on this war riders. Getting closer and closer to level 4. The creep will be taken by the peasants in the last possible second. But the money goes to Isengard. Not that he, need it, that he needs it. He has very good looking uh, map control. As you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 settlements under his control. There is Legolas. Legolas is a troublemaker. So basically he's as fast as Lourdes. So if Lourdes is chasing you, and you, all you need to do... By the way, he finished off one of the battalions. All you need to do is just keep running. But remember, Isengard, if he really, really wants to kill your Legolas, he can always use the Palantir on his Lourdes, which will give Lourdes a burst of movement speed bonus. You know, obviously this makes your his Lourdes faster than your Legolas, and you can get crippled. And when you get crippled after this level 3, he will kill you. But you need to be level 3 level three for this one. Which is going to be also quite difficult because there is not much to kill. When it comes to Warchant, now Legolas has to run for his life. But he's towering up. Look at the DPS the Vorks are dealing to Legolas actually. Ooh, there comes the Cripple. Does he have heal from the Spellwalk? The answer is yes. Uh, good situation. Beautiful Hoax right here. He needs to heal him. Heal in the last possible second. Ooh, they, now he's farming power points, isn't he? Yeah, he's farming power points now. Lourdes has to be careful. Lourdes can't win the bow fight against Legolas. Nobody can, actually. Legolas has the highest DPS because he's also shooting very fast. Now, when you cover the mouse over Legolas, it will tell you range damage 80. And from Lourdes, it is um, 45. So it's double the damage. But obviously, also Legolas has more levels on him. He's level 3. Um, but even if the damage would be the same, or if Lourdes would have slightly more DPS, I mean damage... It wouldn't change the fact that Legolas is gonna still murder you. Because he's shooting twice by the time you shoot once. It's a very crazy attack speed, which will make him quite dangerous. But the map control is looking phenomenal for Aizen. Rowan has only two farms un under his control. But remember, he has Elma outload leadership. That means whenever he kills stuff, he will get money. There is still one creep remaining. That's the last creep remaining on the map. Pyrian deal. Lourdes is recovering, he has the chance to cripple one more time, but again, you know, crippling won't matter, because you can't kill, that's the problem. But you can kill when you have some works of upgrades, when they have heavy armor and forge plates, they will be coming super beefy, and this combined with the hold and war chant, they can actually just two-shot this Legolas, who is all about hit level 4, by the way. Rohir marches with double leadership very soon, because Eoma is all about hit level 4 will also kind of counter Vorks and Heroes and Pikemen. Charku has been recruited, the Vork hero. My Vorks are hungry. Okay, Outpost captured by Rohan. Aizen doesn't want to commit to this because he doesn't want to feed power points to Legolas, which kind of makes sense. Gondor has now in total two power points under his control. Aizen got almost the same. Okay. Armory, he's eating up the other units to get level 4. So he's using the feast over and over again, the bloodthirsty, to get free experience, basically. You can do this also with Rohan, uh, with Mordor, I mean, when you have the orcs, and there is a drummer troll nearby. You can use the bloodthirsty if you have a lot of time to level, level up your units easily to all the way to level 10, actually. It will just take you a bit of time, but you can do this. I mean, basically one spear throw away from getting to unlock the horse lord. Lots of war riders though. One, two, three, four battalions in total. The Warks have a different uh, thing. When they use this, they will actually uh, lose armor quite a lot. But they get 20% damage. So that's, that was different before in the base game. You see? Line formation. is misleading. That's not correct display. 
needs to be fixed. Okay, big army. All right. Remember, there is no heavy armor on them, though. They are very really strong. They have crazy DPS. But when they get to get some hits from the enemy units on them, they will just get crushed. So you need heavy armor to become tanky. To be able to fight extended duration of a war, you know? This way you can only poke and uh, you have to disengage. And you, want, you need to avoid getting hit by anything. So banner purchase, fire all purchase, heavy armor purchase, and also forge please purchase. This needs to be demolished ASAP. There comes the spear throw, and uh, never mind, one more. But there comes the war chant. My wargs are hungry. There comes the palantir. The wargs are zooming. In the meantime, this Elma is not going to make it alive, but he was able to get level 4 just before he gets killed. In a dream world, you want to give the last hit to, Lego, uh, to Lourdes. He was healing his uh, Elma, but it won't change it. I... I think it would be better for him to just give it to... Um, oh my god, it was lagging for a second. To just give it to uh, Lourdes, you know? Lourdes would get level 3 by this. The Vorgs have to disengage now. And I think all the Rohirrim matches were able to survive. But remember, he needs to revive his Irma, who was level 4. It will take you 2 minutes. It costs you momentum and a 1,000 resources, which will slow you down, you know, big time. Because we are in the mid-game. 1,000 is a lot in the mid-game. And he, because he needs to do so much at the same time, you know. He needs to buy this. He needs to get recruit, revive him. And the money could be invested into getting more Rohirrim archers. Or into saving eventually for Aragorn. But Elma is a must have. When you go for the horse strategy. Because he's the best leadership giving hero in terms of DPSing. Now Isengard has combos. Pikeman, crossbowman combos. And one Uruk crossbowman combo. But remember there is no consistent leadership for this army of Aizen. That's the problem. There is no Saruman for the armor leadership and there is no Lords with level 5 just yet, you know? So he has only War Chant, which is still very good, 50-50 damage armor, but the Rohan will have more leadership than he does. He will have Eoma, Theorin, the War... The Shark just got one tapped. But Theorin got crippled. Can we not make peace, you and I? <laughs> this dead boy. Don't underestimate them. Legolas is almost level 4. Should be using the Hulk Strike over and over again. If you have to make a choice between using the Hulk Strike on the Vorks or on the combos, always choose the combos because they are way more vulnerable against arrow damage compared to the Vorks. Vorks have like good resistances against heroes. Theodin has to be revived. Elma has to be revived. He has plenty of horses though. That's good. Did he go for the Grand Harvest? The answer to this question is nope, he didn't. He's going for whatever reason to the Archer range one more time. That is actually not a big reason for this because he already has the Fire Rose. Now Isengard is rotating from the top side. It's a big army. Army Worthy of Mordor. Sauron would be proud. Sauron would be proud, my friend. The farm here will be destroyed, no problemo. Isengard is looking super strong. And especially when Saruman, who is going to be recruited very soon, will join the battlefield. But Rohan is also looking pretty strong. Just like in the films, you know? Sharku, uh, Sharku can't really do much. He's not the tankiest hero of all, of all time. If he gets a couple of shots from the Rohirrim archers, he will just get melted. So I think it's not good to send him for fighting. He should be used for pressuring. But we will see the animation now. The new power is rising. Its victory is at hand. A new power is rising in victory is at hand. Okay. I mean, this is a scary army, but I believe Isengard has to siege him very soon, right? He's going for the siege works finally at the outpost. Um, could also go for the outpost here. There is no reason to not to do this. Just avoid, uh, you know, you need to make sure that your opponent doesn't get too much money. And he's getting money from the Citadel, right? He's getting discount on the heroes from the Stubble Statue. He has still these two farms, one of them being level 3 under his control. And he has obviously five farms in the castle. And three of them are also level 3. But this is going to be an interesting fight. This is going to be an interesting fight. Let's see who will pull this off. March to Helm's Deep. Okay, 
So triple hero action, but Lourdes still not level 5. Keep that in mind. No freezing rain. But it looks like Rohan doesn't want to fight for his outpost. He needs to just, he will just give it up. In the meantime, he's rotating to the other outpost. And he will get some power points from killing the siege weapons. But this stuff will get one tap by the Rohirrim warriors. And now the outpost will be basically swapped. That's a strategy and technology you can use. And you know you can't win a fight. You, need, you don't need to take it unless it's in your castle and it's the game winning fight or game losing fight. In this, in this specific case, it's only an outpost he will give up, but he will exchange it by taking down the enemy outpost, right? And that's the mobility advantage of horses compared to the immobile combo battalions. That they can do this, that they can rotate. This army, in order to you know fight against this army, you need combos and pikemen. Your pikemen all alone can't defend you against Rohirrim archers. Now the level three furnaces are open foot. That comes to Vorchant and Palantir on the Vorks. And it looks like you want to commit. But remember, even with the uh, Vorchant, this Vorks still don't stand any chance against the mighty Rohirrim with double leadership. Emma in theory, they can turn and fight this. If even Alvin warriors upon the field, something we don't see very often. The side of one is empty. Can we not make peace, you and I? There was a horrible fight for Aizen. What a poor decision making. You can't expose your heroes like this. Yama will be getting killed in exchange, but he lost all the more important heroes. Only Sharku, who's a level one hero, remains under the control of Aizen. Yes, now the freezing rain. Yes. But don't use it. It is only Theorin. But maybe you, you might need to use it. Here you don't want to fight against Rohirrim, Rohirrim warriors. You always want to kill Rohirrim archers, which are way more squishy compared to the Rohirrim warriors. Oh my god, what a, what a disaster fight. It was a winning fight for Aizen, but you can't, you know, you can't give Rohan the chance to just wipe your heroes like that, you know? Outpost will be captured. Still a phenomenal map control for... Aizen, there is Aragorn, Aragorn, the son of Arathorn, and he's gonna just clean this up a little bit, super tanky, but now without the Blade Master, you need to be careful, you don't want to be on the land, Legolas is coming, what a shot, they fly like brothers, the Hulk Strike, now they need to build, with Elven Warriors, we have basically the full arsenal of what the Rohan army has to offer, beautiful decision making though, Oh, but there is no cripple, that's the problem. If there is cripple, Aragorn without the Blade Master will be getting killed. Yes, Anduril, yes. But you don't want to fight here, that's a big mistake. On the Alvin Wood, you have no leadership. The nice micro with the pikemen though, Legolas is going to be shot a little bit. The Vorks are chasing him with Sharku. Sharku, send your Vork riders. There comes the Elendil and the Freezing Rain. Oh my god, this is a awkward fight actually here it's super dangerous to fight cripple but what's what's lords doing lords will get killed but there are so many stuff getting killed in exchange here they just got one tapped from the trampling you don't want to kill aragon can you kill aragon i don't think you can maybe you can he has heal not available just yet he's spamming it probably no it won't be recharged just in time the rohir marches you want to turn and fight them a little bit there comes the big heal, beautiful trample. Legolas is just behind shooting, DPSing, bam, 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 and swiping everything. Holy guacamole. In the meantime, with human archers, with random elves popping. What a great game this is. Look at this DPS from this Rohirrim archers. We have seven power points in total for Rohan. He has now the choice to go for either Cloudbreak or the End Summon. Saruman has been finally revived. The good thing for Aizen is he's get map control at least. Um, but he needs to make a whole new army. Lourdes has to be revived. Charco has to be revived. He needs to make combos. He's making too many Vorks. But Vorks will not have a chance against the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archers in the long run. There comes the Tainted Land cover. Fireball. Tainted Land is a double-edged sword. It can be, will be used later on to negate the effect of the rain. There comes the Hawk Strike level 7 Legolas. If you ever can isolate target your Saruman or Lourdes, you can, or both of them, you can just one tap them both. Like, basically, you can't get away from the Arrow Wind. Arrow Wind will not linger, you know? 
look, he's DPSing. Boom, 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 boom. The Vorks are committing to the outpost, getting power points. There comes the steal, but you can't steal. Look this arrow only. Pew, 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 pew. Woohoo, man. Dude, that's something you don't see very often. You know, the arrow volley in a one-on-one -on -one competitive game in the ranked arena for BFME1 on the patch 2.22. That's rare, bro. Charco getting level 4. We, this is going to be fixed, by the way. Don't worry about this one. Um, he's going to get killed. 8 power points against 10. But again, either 7 or 6 of them have to be invested into Cloud Break or the End Summon. That's two of your possibilities. The problem is the heroes from Isengard, the micro from Aizen is kind of meh. He was inting the heroes over and over again. Basically, your Saruman can't go for a play. He can't as long as Legolas is under uh, the control of Rohan and he's alive, you know. Cloud Plague will be chosen. I think it's a good choice. Rohan is taking over the map. And climbing back with his triple leadership. Very close to Glorious Charge. Movie accurate gameplay from Rohan. The Owls are helping him. The three Hunters are helping him. Glorious Charge will be eventually unlocked. Eoma is the big help here, just like in the films. If level 10, Rohirrim Archer damage. Boom! One shot. Release the arrows, okay? I mean, this guy is so dangerous now. He's, this is the best hero killing ability in the game, by the way. Arrow Wind, isolated, it one, shot, it one shots even Gandalf. Towering up a little bit. No archers inside the tower. He's gonna demolish it. 9 power points against 5. So power points are looking better for Rohan than it is looking for Aizen. This Rohirrim will be taken down. It's quite tanky as you can see and tell, right? Elves are going to war. Legolas was using the 3 archers. The level 3 furnaces will be getting melted. There is no army that is strong enough to match this army from Rohan. Freezing Rain is almost recharged. He has, om he has also Vorchan for the next big fight. But he's losing half of the base. That's the problem. He's waiting for his Saruman to be rejoining the battlefield. It will still take you around about 10 seconds. We will count it. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And he's back in the business. There comes the Cloud Break slow and armor reduction. That's pretty strong. Very close to level 4. Saruman has to be staying behind the army. That's very important. You don't want to give him the chance to get wiped here. And the army from Rohan has to build at least for a bit. There comes the Palantir for the movement speed boost. And again, Saruman is making a major mistake and stepping up in Legolas. Just like a deja vu, my friends of Middle-earth. You can't mess up with this Alvin Prince of Midwood. That's not happening. It's not happening, bro. You know? Oh my god. He has 11 power points against 7. And we have GC, boys. If GC boys do it, just like in the films, but it won't happen. Isengard will lock off the game and the victory goes to Rohan in a phenomenal, good against evil performance, movie accurate, just like in the films. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like to this video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.